And welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antony Nanto, show with UATV. The military intelligence of Ukraine has recorded preparations for the transfer of nuclear weapons from the territory of the Russian Federation to the territory of temporarily occupied Crimea. At the same time, the Russian armed forces began massive military exercises in Crimea in parallel with drills staged by Western countries near the Russian border. To talk more about this, we're joined at the studio today by retired U.S. Navy Captain Gary Tabe. Hello and thank you for joining. Thank you for inviting me. So, Glad first of all, <laughs> likewise. First of all, let's talk about the um, the fact that the Russian Ministry of Defense is holding large-scale exercises uh, on the territory and near the territory of annexed Crimea, with a lot of armed forces participating. Now, uh, why is Russia trying to? Mm, trying to show force uh, to not, not to show force but to you know to to large to to enlarge its presence in Crimea is it so afraid that Ukraine is going to try to take it back using force no I don't think so because uh, the Ukrainian force is nowhere comparable to the Russian force it's just a large Soviet army will be fighting or small Soviet army would be fighting against the large Soviet mm. army which is uh, which is not pragmatic however uh, it, I don't want to speculate on things, but usually civilized countries do not turn uh, resort areas, you know, international resort areas into polygons for testing uh, military uh, equipment or grounds for the exercises of military So is it, is it a kind of a message to Ukraine? I think it's a message to to, to everyone, the rest of Europe, insecurity. To if it is a message, it's a very insecure message, saying, "Hey, hey, we, you know, we have a huge military. We're gonna, we can fight. We can defend this land." Um, but uh, I don't think it's um, it's serious in the sense. First of all, I do not think that Putin is fights wars this way. You know, his KGB mentality does not let you go, as you say, head to head. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's more of a diversion and it's more, more of a provocation on his part, I think. I think also it is, his, you know, Putin just lost a huge battle, political battle. I mean, he just lost huge uh, with the Trump investigation that it's came to a conclusion that he really, really, what we say, snatched the defeat right out of hands of victory. You know, mm -hmm. usually def snatched the, mm -hmm. the, the victory out of hands of defeat. But he did the, because he was able to convince the whole world. He was able to convince Ukrainians. He was able to convince half of our country, especially mass media, that he was the agent of Putin, that Trump was agent of Putin, that Putin was controlling everything, that he elected the president, not the American people. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful the man is. And now it, that bubble just blew up. So what else can he do? What else can, how else can he show influence in this world? Just flex army e muscles? Yeah, economically he's weak. Uh, politically he's weak, he's not invited anywhere. He's not invited to Poland to, mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. to mark the, the beginning of World War II. And of course in, in the Russian or Soviet mentality, it's them who won the war and they're not being invited, that's another slap. So he lost on a lot of fronts, so now all he can do is flex a muscle, uh, showing, okay, it's not only cartoons that I'm showing you, I can actually deploy uh, a large force to this, uh, to Crimea. The well, but then again, weak. there is NATO that can also deploy uh, there is no need for NATO to, to deploy. Black Sea has no strategic importance. And Black Sea is surrounded by NATO countries. They can shoot without exactly. fleet being there. They can shoot across easily. So they don't even need to deploy. Again, deploying only to show support for Ukraine. Our ships, NATO ships, their presence in the Black Sea is simple political uh, statement that we support Ukraine in their endeavor. So basically the fact that NATO is building up its military presence in the countries that are surrounded by, that, that are surrounding the Black Sea shore is just another message to Vladimir Putin that we can fight you back? No, it's the message that we don't agree with you. We think what you're doing is you're interrupting a world balance that, that we tried to create since World War mm -hmm. II, that uh, the borders should not be violated, that the uh, sovereign countries should remain sovereign. You want to give independence to, to, to someone, give independence to Chechens. Right. Why, uh, why are you trying to give independence to Crimeans when they don't ask you? To for the country it? that is already independent. Right. To the, one that, you, the one that you guaranteed before. that you're going to protect yeah. and you're attacking. If you don't want to, 
if you don't want countries to join NATO, don't attack them. Simple as that. Don't mm -hmm. threaten them. Because the more you threaten them, the more they're trying to go into NATO. Now Finland is thinking about it. You know, mm -hmm. they're trying to do that. Uh, Next probably will be Kazakhstan, right? <laughs> could be, could be, but let's, you know, let's, let's not. Let's not rush, right? Yes, this. let's not put ideas into Putin's head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, nevertheless, uh, it, besides of building up military presence by NATO countries, there is also another way of letting Putin know that the rest of the world does not agree with what he is doing, and that is economical sanctions. You have mentioned already that Russia is economically weak. Now, how much does Russia suffer or the, the Kremlin itself suffer from the sanctions that are being imposed by EU, by the US. Well, on uh, Russia is a huge thing. So how much uh, the, the Kremlin and their inner circle suffers, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, now uh, I know that there has been uh, an investigation launch and I, I believe President Trump ordered for our Department of Justice to investigate where Putin's money and his inner circle's money are and uh, what, what to do with it and how to sanction that. And, uh, and that's pretty, pretty upsetting probably for Putin's friends. Mm. Uh, the people, the common people, the 99.9% .9 of the country outside of Moscow, uh, they probably do not suffer much because their lives for them has not really changed since Yeah, they since have Zarstad. been poor and they, they remain been, poor. They lived off their, of their plants, of their land, their land right. and, and they continue to live that way. They continue to have no roads, no hot water, no hospital. Things hasn't changed for them for 5,000 years. Okay, so basically the situation has changed only for the for the top oligarchs yeah. that are that are maybe, inside maybe of the inner the, circle of Vladimir yeah, Putin and his yes, family. Yes, I think so, and I think it's probably most, I don't like to speculate on these things, but maybe the, that minute middle class that's there is also probably affected. Mm -hmm. And uh, the migrants that come to work, to Moscow anyway, to, to the help that would come from the former Soviet republics, including Ukraine, they'll just go somewhere else. And Ukrainians now can go to Europe, so there's mm -hmm. no point for them to go and earn money in Russia. They can go to, to, to European countries to do that. Okay, so basically, uh, as it turns out, that the sanctions are only hurting the rich mass of people living in Russia, or for that matter, in the capital of Russia, just Moscow. Well, well maybe some yeah. of them. Well, it depends Pittsburgh. which sanctions. We have plenty of sanctions, but American sanctions, the U.S. sanctions, were never meant to hurt the people. It was right. meant to hurt. There was the, a list of people. Industries, right? right. And the, the certain people that are in support of uh, Putin's policies. Mm hmm. But does it influence the economical state of affairs in Russia? Sure, sure, it does. You know, you can you can tell if you, I'm sure you and I we have plenty of Russian friends who now say, you know what, they say that it doesn't affect, but I can't get good cheese or good milk for my kids. Mm -hmm. I can't get the quality products. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the I have a friend who is in the oil and gas business and he's saying there's some sort of a seal, rubber seal that they, they, they used to get from the United States in order to drill, uh, but now it's sanctioned and they can get it and they can get it from China. They can't produce one like that themselves because it rips, it breaks. It's not, it's not working. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of uh, Russian uh, high-tech industry that's coming to a halt. They can't, they, you can't be, in today's world, you can't be isolated. That's you, true. you just can't, you can't find, no matter how much you say, okay, we're going to do All it, the we're going to, we're going to build it ourselves, we're going to produce it ourselves. Yes, you probably can produce a hammer yourself, but in today high tech world, you can't, you can't, all this cannot be produced in Ukraine. You have, you have to have a consolidation of different states and different strengths. You have to have Japanese, Chinese, you have to have all kinds of different countries uh, uh, and you have to be in uh, friends with them. <laughs> I agree. So in this situation that Russia ended up in right now, meaning um, the, the sanctions and all that, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, does it look like um, an attempt to economically fight back and how high are the chances that it could be successful? I don't know because I'm not I'm not, it's not my field of expertise. I know you're or, not an energy I, I know, expert. I know only, I can, but I can only tell you this, that not only Russia is being isolated by others, Russia is very good at isolating itself themselves. Mm -hmm. So many things that Russia does is not to benefit themselves. 
a lot of things Putin does, and he's in a circle that is not to benefit themselves, but to hurt others. So, you know, there's this old Russian saying. So this is just a mentality thing. Well, I don't care if I don't care if my cow dies as long as my neighbor's cow dies, right? As and, well, and, and, right, right, as well. As long as he's poor, I don't want to be rich. You know, I'll, I'll I'll be as sick as well as as he is. So the Northern Pipe, in my opinion, and my opinion, you know, is you can take it for whatever it is, is that it's not to enrich Russia. It's to hurt Ukraine. That's it. That's it. So basically, the Kremlin or, or Vladimir Putin himself would go into all that expanse, all that political turmoil just to hurt Ukraine because or, Ukraine were not willing to surrender. Well, you know, we're trying to put our somewhat healthy mentality into a mentality of somebody who's sick, somebody who's Stalin, somebody who's Hitler, somebody who's paranoid, somebody who's been poisoned by power, by too much power for too long. And we're trying to think the way they think. We can't. It's, uh, we're trying to, 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 to think the way we, we're not programmed to think. And uh, yes, uh, Hitler was willing to destroy Germany as long as he would prove that he, everybody's the enemy. Mm. He's paranoid. Stalin was killing everybody around him because he was paranoid because everybody's the enemy. They don't think the way we do. It's not necessarily to... I, I understand people who will steal something, you know, they will steal this glass because it would be look nice in their apartment because they benefit from it somehow, personally. But there are some people who will just break the glass because they don't want I you don't to have, have it. I don't have it and you, you should not have, have it. it right. And okay. the, that mentality, that paranoia gets on and on and on and on. And the longer he's in power, the more dangerous he is in in ability to break that glass all right well ukrainian intelligence according to ukrainian intelligence russia has been supplying latest uh, communicative mobile systems to donbass mm -hmm. why do you think that is being done because it is the uh, biggest uh, weakness uh, in a chain of military in Russia. They've learned that during their uh, military operations in Georgia. That's why they ordered Mistral's from mm -hmm. France. Mm -hmm. Mistral's were not, they didn't need them in that region as a helicopter landing platforms. They needed that as communication centers, as, uh, uh, as command and control centers, mm -hmm. which communications. Communications in the military is very complicated, and a lot of people think that people just go and fight and shoot in tanks and airplanes. No, all of that together is put by the communications, by the satellites, by the comms. It's a very, very important part of the military operations. Uh, but it also is a very important part of operations when you jam them, and what Ukrainians I believe now worried about that they will not be able to uh, jam them in a sufficient way, mm -hmm. the Russian communications in Crimea. Although I have seen at the show, at your latest military show, a lot, quite a bit of progress in, uh, in advance in, in the high tech of Ukrainian military. And I um, remember I saw the jamming equipment called the uh, I believe it was called Nota, made by uh, Tritel, uh, a Ukrainian company. There is such a company. In there is such a company, right, so I'm not mistaken. And uh, they showed me all kinds of different aspects of that, of that equipment and how it uh, could be mobile, it could be stationary, it could be out of airplanes, out of trucks, it could be operating. And it was jamming, well, they showed me, the testing was quite well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, Ukrainian military will apply something like that. The kind of, of course, <laughs> Ukraine has friends. Ukraine is not the only country in this world that has to, you know, trying to survive on its own. It has plenty of good friends that have high-tech technology and that will probably, and I'm sure, not probably, I'm sure, will be willing to help. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank for you. Thank you for inviting me again. I think your channel is very important for the American-speaking community in the world to hear the Ukrainian side of the story. Thank you so much. That, that's you. why we're working. That's why we exist, because Great. we want to bring the true story to the rest of the world. Thank Thanks. That was retired U.S. Navy Captain Gary Tabak. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for more.